Hey, man, I'm Wavy Wayne from wavywayne.com. I'm an audio engineer, I'm an educator, and the creator of the Wavy One Studio headphones. I've been privileged to work with artists such as Jim Jones, Lydia Caesar, Future, Yo Gotti, Ashanti, and a whole lot more. I get super inspired by a song's lyrics. So as a mix engineer, the lyrics and the composition of the song really kind of push me to be even more creative and dig deep. Flow state is very important to me. Once I can just start working on the project and my tools disappear, meaning I'm not thinking about which tools I'm going for for editing. I'm not thinking about what speakers I'm mixing through. I'm literally just in that moment, immersed in the music and making things happen. That's when I know that I've reached peak flow and I'm in my flow state. I love working with new artists, especially if they're kind of new to their craft or if they're just new working with me. It's like the beginning of a relationship. So I tread lightly at the beginning. I try to be very attentive and pick up on the cues that the artist is giving me. So I may do things like ask them questions to help them get a little more comfortable, maybe crack a joke or in the studio or something like that. I knew I wanted to be an audio engineer from the time I was in the sixth grade. I actually went to a studio and I saw the enthusiasm on the audio engineer's face. He was so into the music and was attentive to every single beat. I knew that his enthusiasm was like rubbing off on me. So I immediately started diving in, learning everything that I can. And this was in the sixth grade. So it's been a long time for me since I knew that I wanted to be an audio engineer. It's hard for me to think of a moment in particular that was the biggest break. Cause for me, everything has just been kind of collectively piling up. You know, when you're in those studio sessions, when you are working on that record, you don't really think of it as going to be the next biggest thing or this is such a huge break. Just because I'm so focused on getting the job done and doing my best work, sometimes I never even look up to realize, hey, what, I, what I'm doing is actually pretty dope and it's on a huge scale. I rarely even have those moments of realization. I probably should more often though. As an audio engineer, a mix engineer, an educator, even a YouTuber, right? I feel like I have huge responsibilities to my clients. I have huge responsibilities to my students. Um, when I reached the 200,000 mark on YouTube and subscribers, I realized that those 200,000 people weren't there subscribed for what I had done in the past is that they were looking forward to what I was going to bring to them in the future. So I see all of this as a huge responsibility and, you know, wanting to deliver and keep my promises to my people uh, is what actually keeps me up the most. I deal with these challenges by finding ways to continuously add value to my clients by continuously finding new methods and just keep learning and educating myself. I've been fortunate enough to work with some really dope audio engineers and producers. And one moment that particularly stood out to me is when a producer, multi-platinum producer, tapped me on my shoulder and said, you know what, Wayne, I can't do what you do and you can't do what I do. So we need each other. There's a collaborative spirit when we're working in the studio. And I think that we all have our unique talents. No matter what, if we sat in the same classroom and learned the exact same thing, we all have an innate ability to kind of create and recreate. And just my own personal spark of creativity is what I bring to the table. I find myself most creative when I'm inspired. So before I open up my Pro Tools session and start working, I'll just pull up some music that I really love and enjoy that make me realize and remember why I fell in love with music in the first place. Why did I fall in love with this process? So oftentimes I'll just go back to some of my favorite songs and that'll help me get into the groove. I love working with an artist who knows their direction, who owns their artistic expressions, you know? They're not looking for approval from anyone. They're not afraid to jump outside the box and create and try new things. I love working with artists who just are free and, um, you know, just want to express themselves. I started using Pro Tools in the early 2000s, probably like 2002, 2003. And I actually got my first Pro Tools certification, which was a huge jump for me in my career in 2008. So I've been a Pro Tools user and advocate for a long time. I choose Pro Tools because it's the world's first DAW and it's all in the name Pro Tools. If you're a professional, these are the professional tools that you need. Pretty early on when I was visiting the large studios, I didn't really understand that it was Pro Tools and I would hear Pro Tools being rapped about in songs um, as I was a kid. And 
as I grew up, we obviously wanted to go for Pro Tools. That was the, the standard doll. That was what everybody was using to create these high level songs. So I had a friend in high school who got an inbox LE set up and had that Mac computer when we were in high school. And we was just start playing around, doing whatever we could do. Wasn't any YouTube tutorials to teach us how to use the software. So we would just start rocking out in Pro Tools. And, and that was like the early 2000s. We just started by having fun, really. Pro Tools is really the brain of the operations in my studio. I record everything into Pro Tools. I mix into Pro Tools. I even produce in Pro Tools. So I just think of Pro Tools as the all-in-one workhorse. You can even take it on the go. You don't need any fancy uh, hardware, equipment. You can really just be creative and express yourself no matter where you're at. All you need is a laptop. <laughs> I realize that there's three to 10 ways to do everything in Pro Tools. And they wrote that into the software because every professional has a different workflow. You can find your workflow by using Pro Tools no matter how you choose to work. Pro Tools just has the most flexibility. Pro Tools understands the professional workflow. They understand how I want to be unbound in my creative expression while I am working in the software. So Pro Tools just opens the door up to create however and whatever you absolutely want. I love that it's a blank canvas with every tool that you need to get busy. The editing workflow in Pro Tools is unparalleled by any other DAW that I've ever worked with. I cannot live without those shortcuts, the quick keys, and just the ability to edit so precisely and cleanly like Pro Tools allows us to do. I continue to use Pro Tools today because over the years, Pro Tools software has continued to evolve to meet the needs of modern producers and recording and mixing engineers. They're ahead of the curve and they always have been. They call me an editing ninja. I am the fastest editor in Pro Tools that you know of. Put your money up, you know what I'm saying? When it comes to quick keys, they used to call me quick key shawty as well. <laughs> I love the ability to use those quick keys and just the fast, precise editing in Pro Tools is just, it's the best. One of my favorite virtual instruments that's stock in Pro Tools is the Expand 2. I love the flexibility of Expand, how you can actually create brand new sounds by layering sounds together. It's pretty light on the DSP too, so I like that. There are so many features in Pro Tools. And if I had to sum up three of my favorite, it would be probably three of the newer ones, like folder tracks, like routing folders and the basic folders. That organizational technique is super key and crucial. I love that that's been added. I also love the ability in Pro Tools to go from audio to MIDI and from MIDI to audio. Now I know that's one and two, that's one, two and three for me. <laughs> Pro Tools has a lot of dope stock plugins people be sleeping on stock plugins that's because they using other dogs try out the stock plugins and pro tools like the deverb that's a great little reverb you know and i really love the stock pro tools compressor the dyn 3 compressor limiter super clean very accurate compressor when you need compression like that there's no really better one to go to if you just want a clean compressor some of the biggest misconceptions about pro tools is that it's hard to learn is that it's not user friendly is that it's not for producers, right? You can't make a beat in Pro Tools. So many people think that, but really Pro Tools is open to any type of creative audio ideas that you have and it's it's there for it. If you're just getting started on your musical journey and you're thinking about a software to record and mix in, Pro Tools is hands down the best one. Remember, Pro Tools was actually the world's first DAW, the world's first tapeless recording system. So every other DAW after that is only mimicking what Pro Tools has done. So I recommend that you learn Pro Tools inside and out. And even if you decide to use another DAW, you'll easily be able to jump in and control it because they're built off of the skeletons of Pro Tools.